Hi, greetings and welcome back. Uh, this is uh, vlog um, number 16, I believe. Uh, so we're getting pretty uh, close to uh, almost the, uh, halfway through now of my autobiography. Um, right, well, in 1985 saw the return of El Capitano John Mayer, uh, an issued event in Italy on the River Arno in Florence. Now, Making the trip um, with us this year was Ray Mumford of Kingston, London, uh, England. Now, uh, Ray uh, befriended the Welsh team uh, about a year before, claiming uh, he had Welsh descendants. <laughs> now, although Ray had fished for England uh, in some minor competitions, um, he was never really in favour of uh, Dick Clegg uh, uh, management. Um, and uh, most thoughts uh, thought Ray was uh, a little bit of an oddball. Um, you know, however, I got on extremely well with Ray and found him to be uh, a great friend, you know, a great friend. And uh, his nature was, <laughs> as I say, rather um, unlike mine, I suppose, <laughs> at the time. Uh, anyway, as I say, over the years I've met many people and Ray was uh, a one-off, you know. Uh, I, I would say, um, Ray was uh, an extraordinary man with vision and um, uh, whose pioneering and individuality uh, made him years ahead of uh, a lot of match anglers and in the match fishing circuit. He was frowned upon by uh, a lot of anglers and um, I, I wouldn't like to mention now but uh, a lot of anglers who I were very friendly with in the England team. Um, however, that's another story. And now, uh, his outspoken and outlandish approach, uh, he was one of the first in a breed of travelling anglers. Uh, you know, I first met Ray in uh, a home international on North Park Lake in Cardiff. As a young man, uh, looking up to a mentor figure, I found Ray to be very knowledgeable, uh, far and above most others. In fact, I would say he was bordering on, uh, on genius or, or madness. Um, you know, he would tell how, uh, how the moon affected uh, the fish. And this is long before, you know, uh, people wrote about it at this day and age. Um, you know, he would say that uh, in the late evenings, you know, when a, on a full moon, he would howl. <laughs> yeah, physically howl, um, you know, and he would say that the fishing uh, wasn't going to be as clever the following day. Uh, I assume that um, the, uh, the moon, which brought light to the water, uh, made the fish feed. I don't know. I don't really know. Maybe uh, some say it's the pull of the moon, um, you know, the uh, like the tides. I don't know. But it, it certainly, uh, uh, as I said, um, it's come to fruition over over the last few years that the you know the moon does affect fishing. So as I said, Ray was uh, well ahead of his time. Um, as I said, <laughs> I remember coming uh, on. The, he came to the Switzerland trip uh, the year before, uh, you know, just for the journey, and uh, he would stop with us and. Um, you know, I could hear him in his apartment <laughs> at midnight howling like a bloody wolf. <laughs> and he was saying it was going to be hard for the next day. You know, of course he was right. You know, in Switzerland, the fishing, you know, was uh, was was quite hard. Um, but, you know, deep down he was a true gentleman. Always smartly dressed, you know, in a, a shirt and tie. The only, one, only angler I've ever known to, to actually do that, you know. <laughs> And as I mentioned, Ray accompanied us to uh, uh, to Florence um, to fish on the Arno. Um, whether he was trying to get in the team that year, I don't know. But uh, as I say, he uh, befriended all the Welsh lads. And um, uh, anyway, on the one occasion uh, that we went to the Arno for a practice, uh, as I said, because we used to treat it as a holiday time, we'd go a week or two before and fish, you know, and obviously uh, try and get as much knowledge as we can. But anyway, that particular week, uh, my wife, uh, Pat, at the time, and uh, Ray and his wife, Maureen, a uh, very nice lady, um, uh, you know, we were basically just fishing on the uh, river, uh, practicing and doing a few things, uh, when uh, out of the blue, an Italian man exposed himself. 
<laughs> from behind the bushes. But guess what? It was Ray. Uh, he chased after him, you know, uh, leaving me, you know, sort of fishing. Uh, you know, Maureen in an Irish um, accent, you know, um, you know, shouted out, this man's being rude. <laughs> anyway, off he went, chased him away. Um, now, Maureen, uh, of Irish descent, as I said, uh, would accompany Ray to most matches. And uh, I believe, uh, you know, she was a good angler herself. Yeah, as I said, Ray was great company to be with, and uh, there was always something happening, you know, in his presence. Uh, another example was at the airport. Uh, uh, we were almost arrested when uh, the porter tried to con him out of a, a few thousand lira. You know, and in our money, it was about 25p, but uh, there was uproar, and uh, the police arriving, <laughs> yet, you know, afterwards, it, it, it was hilarious, uh, really. <laughs> now... Ray's ambition was to fish for England in the World Championships, um, yet, you know, he was overlooked on many occasions, uh, even though, you know, he was a pioneer in pole fishing in the UK, you know, introducing pole crooks, external elastics, you know, bloodworm hooks, uh, metal tip pole floats, uh, lean based ground baits, you know, continental fishing boxes, you know. I think the biggest mistake he made, really, was upsetting the wrong people at the wrong time, including the NFA and Stan Smith and Dick Clegg, you know, the English managers. Perhaps he was too outspoken, I don't know. But uh, anyway, Ray was very confident in his own ability, and he would think nothing of turning up at an England trial, um, despite not being invited, and uh, he would sit on the end of the line just because he thought he should be there. Oh. Oh, good old Ray. Anyway, although Ray, uh, Ray reckoned he was he was born in Wales, and uh, the Welsh team, you know, took him on as a favourite uh, son at that time. You know, he helped them, or he helped me and, and the team with some methods and techniques. Hence, you know, arriving some uh, great results later on. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, uh, the Ray Mumford catapult was never really, uh, never really caught on. I don't know if anyone ever knew that one, but it was like a circular catapult and um, you know you find it and they go through the uh, a, a ring uh, you know it was, a, it was a good invention but whether it uh, it actually worked or not I don't know um, I think the best uh, catapult at the time was a, a catapult brought out by uh, Les Prust from Birmingham if I remember correctly yeah you know uh, I got some great memories of Ray uh, because um, uh, as I mentioned earlier on in the vlog, uh, a few years before, we, um, me and uh, a friend of mine, Clive Robbins, we set up a little tackle shop, and uh, you know, he, 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 he wished us well, and he even sent us um, a photograph of uh, of all his trophies that he'd accumulated over the years, and we hung it up in the shop, you know, um, just to say that we knew Ray Mumford. Um, I put a picture of that on the end, anyway, because uh, you know, um, you know, I think it deserves uh, Ray. Uh, memory needs to, needs to be kept alive, I think. Anyway, one of Ray's uh, innovations was his um, Escort estate van. Uh, it was a lime green in colour, and it was all racked out, uh, you know, uh, for, for his rods and, and his ground bait and all his tackle, um, you know, so he could fit it in quite nicely. And um, in, my, <laughs> in my opinion, you know, I mean, even today, uh, a lot of anglers, including myself, now use vans and we rack them out, you know, so we're, we're, we're at least like, I would say, 30 years behind Ray <laughs> in that case. But um, in my opinion, I think Ray was the best angler England had ever produced, uh, but never actually fished for his country, you know, in the World Championships. Uh, I think he fished at home internationals, but not the World Championships. You know, a match, I'm sure, a World Championships, knowing Ray like I did, he may have even won it, you know. But anyway, no, the sad thing is, of course, Ray, um, you know, which happens to a lot of, uh, I suppose, genius people, um, he was living in a care home near Leicestershire uh, when he passed away at, uh, at the age of 77. Um, you know, his demise, um, you know, in his health, um, unfortunately, was due to a mugging at his home when he was just 66, you know, which is younger than I am now. Unfortunately, and somewhat sadly, Ray, uh, a legend, um, he didn't recover, and uh, it was sad that in his later years he couldn't even remember who he was, you know, and, and all that he'd done for modern mat fishing. Yeah, apparently, uh, the last couple of years, um, 
he was in a wheelchair uh, and really for an active man like Ray it would have been a nightmare you know but I hope he rests in peace and he was a great angler and a great pioneer anyway back to Italy 1985 um, the week leading up to the championships uh, Ray taught me a technique that uh, I use even today uh, and that was throwing in small pebbles around the float uh, every few minutes uh, that would attract the fish to the bait um, remembering you know uh, in an earlier vlog when I mentioned about raking the swims out where sometimes noise uh, will attract the fish into the swim and that's without baiting up so anyway um, on this one uh, occasion uh, we were actually uh, trying it to see if it worked on the Arno and uh, um, we were like throwing the pebbles in around the float and it certainly worked you know um, you know, we uh, we started catching a few um, carp. Um, you know, because this yeah, the Arno is is almost uh, in the summer. It's like a big drain. Uh, I think in the winter I've seen some photos of it uh, this winter, where it's actually gushing through. But um, uh, anyway, during the summer it was like a slow drain. Um, it, to be honest, it, it smelled a bit, a, a lot of effluent in it, and uh, you know, it smelled a bit moist. You know, but anyway, it was full of uh, warm water carp. Uh, that would dash off, you know, when you hook them. Uh, unlike the British carp, you know, they'd make a run and you, they'd give up. But those in the hot country just seemed to be full of life, you know. Um, and there was a, a lot of plenty of small European uh, channel catfish as well. Um, and, and they found uh, the food with their whiskers, you know, and that was, uh, was going to be um, very uh, de detrimental to, uh, to the way we fished. Um, and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you about that now in a minute. Yeah, those catfish, um, uh, they were sods because I remember the time uh, when I was there, uh, uh, Kevin was there, he'd gone there a bit early as well, and he was practicing. And, uh, um, you know, it was when I, uh, the, I think it was the first day or two I got there. Anyway, I sat next to him and uh, he swung one of these catfish in and he, and uh, as he did, he, he said, oh, catch that for me, can you unhook it? I said, oh, yeah, no problem. So I went like that and I went, ouch, my God, the spikes had got into my bloody hand, uh, you know, because I, I didn't quite grab it properly because there's a way to grab him and uh, I felt the sharp pain from his fins. Anyway, apparently Kevin had great fun doing this to every angler that come along uh, his way that week, <laughs> including my other friend, Clive Roberts. <laughs> Kevin, you old bugger. <laughs> Yeah, as, as I mentioned, catfish were the main quarry, uh, especially in the team event, uh, uh, with um, sliding floats and worms as bait. Now, uh, the team, England team of uh, Ian Heaps, Dennis White, Dave Rowe, but in particular, were very good at this method in practice. In fact, most of the English team were doing pretty well in practice. Um, for me, um, I did miss the catfish method due to concentrated on those carp that... Uh, you know that um, I, I was catching in practice and uh, you know using the sliding waggler tactic on the day um, perhaps you know it was a lack of uh, not having uh, live worms at the time because uh, the heat would, would would kill the worms very very quickly and I think uh, the secret was is to kept the worms moist you know uh, especially when you put them um, on the hook however um, England um, you know they 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 got they got the they got it together. Um, the Welsh team we I think we struggled a little bit, um, you know, because uh, obviously, you know, not used to catfish. We weren't sure the the way, uh, you know, in a sense, um, you know, realizing that uh, in deep water um, they got small eyes and they they usually feel with their whiskers, you know, for the bait. Um, but that was a lesson learned. And um, however, England uh, now. Even though over the last few years, um, it, well, five years in a row, uh, I think they had um, they had four seconds and a third. Now this year, I think this was going to be the year that uh, uh, England, uh, if you like, came um, you know uh, become the team because um, under the um, Dick Clegg's management, uh, England um, were surely uh, going to be winners. Uh, this you know this time, and um, lo and behold, uh, England um, you know they 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 went on and, and and won the event. Now the Welsh team sadly did not figure in the main uh, list. Nevertheless, um, one of the lads, uh, Phil Davis, 
who I mentioned uh, early on in my blog, um, from North Wales, uh, he did make it to the individual event on the Sunday. Um, now, Phil Davis, in my opinion, was probably the best angler to come from North Wales, um, and showing his competence with a waggler at draw in the end peg. Uh, now, come the match, Phil was um, catching slowly at the start of the match, and we were all opposite, we were on the opposite side of the river. Now, the Arno, uh, the amount of anglers uh, and spectators, uh, there were actually thousands, I think, that somebody estimated, you know, there was like 40 odd thousand on the one day. Anyway, um, but Phil was there and he was fishing away and, um, you know, and uh, we could see uh, that Phil was uh, struggling a little bit on the end peg, even though it was a, a fair old peg, you know, I think he had a, um, you know, he had a good chance. Anyway, I did notice that the anglers uh, next to him and, and just above him uh, were actually spraying, you know, large amounts of bait, in fact, almost double, if not treble what Phil was putting in. So, um, you know, trying to help Phil, I shouted over, hey, Phil, you know, blast the bait in, you know, fill it in a bit more. And um, anyway, he started to fill it in a bit more, you know, and, and he started catching. Uh, you know, no sooner as he changed his tactics and, uh, and, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, he started catching. Anyway, I hope to think that uh, I may have helped Phil uh, because Phil actually came third and he had a bronze medal, so that was great. Uh, success for the Welsh team because that's the first medal since the 1982 um, that, that the Welsh managed to figure uh, in, on the uh, podium. So that was great. That was uh, Phil Davis. Well done. Yeah, as I mentioned, um, the match will go down as a memorable match really because it was uh, England's first success um, since 1954 and uh, beating uh, local favourites Italy by just one point. Um, as I said, it was all down to waggler uh, tactics, sliding waggler tactics, um, and, and worm, as I say. Uh, so, you know, if you fish to your strength, that was my belief then, if you fish to your strength, you know, you've got as much chance as anybody in, in pulling it off. And uh, anyway, England done it, and they had a great result. Um, I've got to uh, just say one thing. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, Team fishing is very difficult, and I know when it comes to the manager, sometimes picking the right men for the day. Yeah, the team, uh, the England team, uh, was a pretty strong team. I, I, I fancied, um, you know, as well as Big Kevin, of course. Ian Heaps um, was there. He, he showed fantastic form on on the uh, Slido Magler. Well, in fact, um, he, he did win the World Championships himself on the Slido Magler. So, as I said, he, even he's left-handed and cock-handed, <laughs> as I call them. Uh, but uh, he, great performance by him. Dave Roper. Uh, now, Dave Roper, he was phenomenal. He, uh, they had a little competition, as I said, um, you know, to who could throw stones across the Arno, and he, he, he cleared him by a mile, you know. Um, uh, then you had Tom Pickering. You now, Tom is a, a class angler, you know, one of, the, one of the best, you know. And, you know, when people talk about legends, you know, these, these guys are legends, you know. Um, it makes me laugh when I, you know, look on social media and people say, oh, legend, you know. They you know nobody's done anything compared with these guys, you know. Um, yeah. But anyway, coming back to uh, uh, Alan McAtee, Alan McAtee and the team, and um, and unfortunately Alan didn't make the team. And uh, I that evening when the, the England team were announced, uh, I, I seen Alan, and uh, he was in quite a, a sober mood there, like you know. But I had a couple of pints with him, and yeah, he was, he was okay. Nice guy, nice gentleman. Um, uh, anyway, Dick Clegg, as I said, um, you know. First time England won it, so um, you know the NFA in their wisdom when they selected Dick, uh, you know a few years prior, and Dick, as we all know, come on to be uh, probably the best team manager England's ever had, and uh, you know I take my hat off to him, and uh, it was fantastic. As far as the Welsh team were concerned, yeah, it was a big learning curve. Yeah, we had we had uh, some success individually with uh, Phil um, third. Unfortunately, none of the other lads um, managed to make the top four. As I said, it was hard in them days, um, you know, because fishing against some of the teams. I think the only way we're ever going to compete, I thought, was going to be when it come to our style of fishing, you know, rods and nine, wagglers and so on. But that was to come. Yeah, so anyway, um, the light's going down faster, so I'm going to finish this vlog now. Uh, 
and uh, try and do another one tomorrow. Um, as I said, next year, uh, or I should say the next vlog, will be uh, the 1986 uh, World Championships. And um, I'll, I was, uh, it was on a split venue, it was on a, the uh, Strasbourg Canal and the River Rhine. And um, I think, well, I'll tell you what happens. Uh, I'll give you an insight. It's uh, basically when I arrived in the international scene, you know, big time. So come back and listen to the next bit, next vlog.